Well, welcome to Go Vote Omaha, presented by the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. I'm Mary Lee Moulton, a League member and your host this evening. Each program we talk about important public policy issues and we hope that you'll discuss these issues and at election time you'll be ready and willing to go vote. This is our legislative wrap-up show. Keep in mind that the Nebraska Legislature is the body that's responsible for drafting the, uh, the budget, tax policy, education funding, and many other issues important to Nebraska voters. And that's why it's important to know what happened in this legislative session. Peggy Adair, our highly unpaid lobbyist for the League of Women Voters of Nebraska, joins us again to talk about the recently concluded, concluded unicameral session. Thanks for being with us, Peggy. Oh, you're welcome. Pleasure to be here. Okay. So the legislature adjourned Synodai on Friday, May 31st, six days early from the 90-day session. Why did they adjourn early? Well, you know, it's all speculation, of <laughs> course, but a couple of reasons. Um, one, I think um, the speaker was trying to um, allow the governor to have a chance to veto some bills, and then because the session was going to be so short, it, then the senators wouldn't have a chance to override those vetoes, and, and in fact, he did do that. Um, the other thing is, I think they were just worn out. Mm -hmm. um, this was a, an especially rancorous session. There were a lot of dirty tricks going on. Mm -hmm. um, things such as the, uh, the speaker, Speaker Scheer, now only allows three hours of debate on a bill that's on general file, and, and in order to continue that debate, uh, the senator who's introducing the bill has to prove that he or she has 33 votes uh, to move the, the bill forward. The problem that with that is, um, so a, a bill will come up, they'll start talking about it on general file, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's this huge long queue of senators who want to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, what they're doing is they're packing the queue so that the bill is forced to go three hours and uh, the introducing center can't stop that. So that's one of the little dirty tricks that they've been doing this year. Okay, and, and then what's the, what happens when, when they're forced to go three hours? Is, does that, is that a way of kind of getting rid of the legislation? It, yeah, it's a way okay. of killing the bill or, mm -hmm. or stopping it. Doesn't necessarily okay. kill it, mm -hmm. but the, the speaker won't allow the bill to come back. So say okay. you've gone three hours of debate and uh, the, you know, the bell rings and you've gone three hours mm -hmm. and that's it. Then they move on to the next bill. So that bill is done and will not be brought back unless, again, that introducing senator can prove that there are 33 votes, which is uh, enough votes to stop a filibuster. Okay. Okay. Now we have 14 female senators, a record number. How does the presence of so many female legislators affect the culture of the legislature? I think it's very healthy, and mm -hmm. I hope that even more will continue <laughs> to uh, uh, run for office in the future. Now we have 14 and that's a record, but it's a record by only one. Okay. Uh, in the past we've had as many as 13 from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, they are diverse. They're diverse in their political uh, spectrum. Uh, they're diverse in age. They're diverse in background. So they bring a lot to the legislature. I find too that there are enough uh, women who are in the legislature now that they kind of have each other's back mm -hmm. when men uh, try to mansplain to them. Okay. Other women will back them up and, and uh, call them on that kind okay. of thing. So okay. it's, it's been very healthy for the culture overall. That's great. Well, let's get into some of the legislation <coughs> that was passed and, and things that weren't passed. So what can you tell us about LB 533? And that proposed changing the language on marriage applications <coughs> and documents, and that was vetoed by the governor. What went on there? Yes, um, that's one of those bills that uh, Senator Hunt brought it, Megan Hunt, mm -hmm. she's a first year senator. Um, and it was, a, it was basically a cleanup bill because the uh, United States has passed, uh, or the uh, Supreme Court has said that um, marriage, same-sex marriage is legal now. Mm -hmm. And so all of the states have to have that similar language in their statutes. Okay. And in uh, Nebraska, we don't. So it's basically just a cleanup bill, pretty simple. And when uh, Senator Hunt first brought this bill, she had 34 votes on it. And <clears throat> Slowly, they kind of fell off, um, and it was. It, and for why? Well, perhaps the governor had something to do that with that. We're not sure. 
But anyway, um, it, it did um, almost make it through. And, well, actually, it did make it through. That was the one where he just said um, that he was going to veto it. Not oh, This was a <coughs> He said, that, uh, this is, I just want to keep this because it was his language. My disagreement with LB 533 is not with the intent to harmonize each of the three official marriage documents. However, while Nebraska must legally accommodate same-sex couples, it is vital that our state also support the vast majority of Nebraskans who believe in traditional marriage. Okay. What concerns me about that is that our governor is supposed to be the governor of all of the people of Nebraska, not just those folks who believe in traditional marriage. He's supposed to be also supporting mm -hmm. those folks who are in a same-sex relationship. Um, so it bothers me that the, the governor signed this simply because he didn't think some people were quite as mm -hmm. uh, in need of support as okay. some of the others. Okay. Now, um, the state's budget, $9.3 billion, it's a two-year budget, was passed without any budget vetoes with an average of a 2.9% annual increase. How was Senator Stinner of the Budget Committee able to accomplish this considering the rancorous nature of, of this session? Yeah, and, and it was pretty amazing. Uh, and it's actually the Appropriations Committee that uh, sets the budget. Okay. That Appropriations Committee, uh, again, is, is a diverse uh, group of people. Um, Senator Stenner has been there for, I want to say, you know, four or five years now. Mm -hmm. Does a really great job. He's a, he's a banker, he's a CPA, he knows his stuff. Um, and then the people on the committee, they work so, so hard. Mm -hmm. They have a, a very good staff, so it's, they really try hard um, to get the, uh, the budget passed. Okay. And I th also think, quite frankly, a lot of people didn't read it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and so, and it was a little, little hard for mm -hmm. some of the folks, but it was a very good, it was a good try, good budget, and mm -hmm. it worked out really well. Okay. Now, they, they did adjourn without a comprehensive bill for tax relief, and that was a very big issue for property tax relief, and without updating the state's main business tax incentive, yeah. and I guess there was, you know, disagreement between urban and rural on both yeah. those issues. So where do we go from here? Where does that, you know, where do these issues go? I know obviously yeah. they're going to carry over into the next session. Sure, sure. Yeah, th mm -hmm. obviously those, those are two very complex issues and we have to have uh, some tax relief and we have to have uh, some business incentives. And so they will come back. Mm -hmm. I think it was just, again, it was another one of those things where, was, where there was a big fight, okay. the urban rural fight. and. Uh, senators got angry because, you know, they weren't passing tax relief um, <clears throat> that was going to help the uh, farmers, and mm -hmm. so then the farmers got angry uh, and didn't want to pass the business incentives, and so nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, though, you would think since each side has kind of its, its kind of pet bill that, that there would hopefully be somewhere to meet in the middle of all of this for the next session. And I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. This, this session was just, again, it was just quite rancorous mm -hmm. and uh, things just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And kind of too much to bite off maybe for one session that it was so complicated because Yes, and these are the school you know, school funding was thrown into all of this too. Yes, and that again is historically a complicated mm -hmm. issue, and we don't get enough state funding uh, for our schools. We we do an excellent job of funding mm -hmm. our schools, but the um, the balance of the state and the local mm -hmm. funding is kind of out of whack with Nebraska. Right. Yeah, I was surprised to see in the Herald, the, in the Omaha World Herald, the difference between what some urban schools got and rural schools, where it was like fifteen thousand dollars in one case and like thirty-five dollars in some of these rural schools. So yes. you can understand why they would be unhappy in yes. when situations like that crop up. Yeah. So uh, Senator Justin Wayne shepherded several bills through. The first was uh, one for the extremely blighted areas in, uh, in North Omaha, special incentives for that. So what mm -hmm. kind of impacts do you think that will have on, on that area? Well, I think it's going to have a great impact. And I, I just have to say, uh, Senator Wayne does a wonderful job of persuading the other senators and helping them to empathize with uh, his constituents. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, um, he does his homework and he talks about uh, the difference between the people that he has as constituents and, for instance, 
the farmers. Mm -hmm. You know, the complaint with the farmers and the uh, tax situation is, well, I want to pass my family farm on to my children, mm -hmm. and my tax burden is so heavy that I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. Senator Wayne says, well, you know what? People in my district don't have property. They don't own property. They have nothing to pass on to their children, and they want to. So he talks about, you know, um, um, systemic racism mm -hmm. and the fact that this has been a historic thing with a redlining and things like that, where people can't even get a home to purchase. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of resonates with the farmers, and they really actually worked together with uh, Senator Wayne to get this particular mm -hmm. bill passed. Okay. And then he also uh, was involved in a mass transit bill. Uh, LB 492. Now that actually got vetoed by the governor, but it was overridden. So what was in that bill and why didn't the governor like it? And Yeah, that it was, um, it's called the Regional Metropolitan Transit Authority. So it creates basically a new taxing authority. And that was the co governor's complaint about okay. that was saying, oh, okay, we're going to raise taxes. That's really not exactly what's happening. What it does is it allows um, Washington County and Dodge County and Sarpy County and Douglas County to get together and develop a plan for mass transit. There's, it's looking to the future of okay. if we're going to grow, if we're going to be a metropolitan area that we, you know, we, we can compete um, for young professionals uh, with other metropolitan areas, then we need to have a really good transportation mm -hmm. system. And then hemp farming also passed, which I yes. think was very pop popular with the, the rural farmers, obviously, so it, that they it would was. have a new market. Yeah. This was a bill, again, uh, Senator Wayne had to do a lot mm -hmm. of educating because a lot of people had no idea what hemp is as compared to what marijuana is. Right. So he had to do some educating of the senators about that. And, and his reason for focusing on hemp farming is because of the CBD, uh, the cannabidiol, um, um, the oils and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. The, the okay. things that, that are becoming very popular mm -hmm. right now uh, because he wants to get processing done in North Omaha. So that's you know a whole new enterprise, whole new business uh, that he hopes that he can help his uh, community to grow with. Mm -hmm. And it will help the farmers too because it gives them a whole new crop um, and a very valuable crop that they can, that they can grow. And it, it fits in with Nebraska's uh, climate too, so it'll be very easy to grow okay. here. All right, that's After all, it is ditch weed. Yeah, so that's good to hear. So, okay. Now let's kind of move over to, to um, the judiciary. So the legislature passed a new 384-bed prison expansion, and there's been an enormous amount of prison overcrowding in Nebraska, and um, do you, how will this affect that? Will it really have an impact on prison over, overcrowding? No. Not, so <laughs> it, it does, it's kind of like just a drop in the bucket, you can is never, that it? You can never uh, build your way out mm -hmm. of prison overcrowding. This has been an issue, you know, I started um, lobbying in 1988. This has been an issue all along. And the fact of the matter is, rich people don't go to prison. Mm -hmm. uh, rich people get headlines, poor people go to prison. And what we have is uh, a prison system that, you know, we try to take care of all of our social ills mm -hmm. with the prison system. People who are mentally ill end up in our prisons. People who are addicted to drugs end up in our prisons. People are, who are in poverty and steal bread mm -hmm. for their families end up in our prisons. Many of the, um, of the reasons that people are there is the reasons of poverty and of mental health. And until we uh, try to find other ways to deal with these issues, we're, st we're gonna continue to have uh, prisons that are mm -hmm. overcrowded. Now we've had federal prison reform in this congressional session. So is there a possibility of having more re reform laws on the books, changing some yeah. of the laws yeah. to reduce the prison population yes. and diverting people to other options? Yes, we're, we're, we're working on that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, Senator Lathrop, who supposedly is a freshman senator, he came in this mm -hmm. year, but he again was here before the term right. limits. And so he's very knowledgeable in this area. And he's and chairman he, of the judiciary. Yes, yes. and okay. he worked on that you know, when he was there mm -hmm. before. So he has some institutional history about that, okay. and, and he's working very hard on that issue. And then were there some, some other courts that they, um, they were able to 
implement some diversion courts? Ah, the problem solving court right. is kind of what they call it. Yeah, things like drug court um, and doing things like restorative justice where you, and, and this particularly works with young people where mm -hmm. you suppose a kid, you know, uh, took a baseball bat and, and hit the neighbors of mailboxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's which is fun. the thing <laughs> to do. Um, instead of, you know, putting that, taking the kid out to Kearney or Geneva, mm -hmm. what they will do is have the child, you know, meet with the people that he uh, wronged mm -hmm. and form some sort of restitution and apologize, you know, simply okay. an apology. Apology goes a long way. So it's a restorative justice of mm -hmm. making things healthy again. Um, and that's a very important one. And the drug courts um, also work very well. Rather than, again, sending them to prison, mm -hmm. Um, they work through the drug court system very uh, tightly um, okay. to help them with the underlying issues so that they can restore themselves to health. And this helps keep them with their families because when they're separated from their family, sure. they don't have a job and they have to go on welfare and all of these things tumble down and it just, just um, piles onto one another. Okay. Um, just to remind those who are listening on our podcast, um, this is Mary Lee Moulton talking with Peggy Adair about uh, the wrapping up of the mm -hmm. legislative session. So let's just go on to Senator uh, Megan Hunt's LB311, which would uh, extend SNAP benefits to people convicted of drug possession upon their release from prison. Now, it received widespread support at first, but it ebbed away and it didn't make it. So yes. kind of what happened there? Yes. The, the issue in Nebraska is um, when a person goes to prison for any offense, uh, when that person completes his or her mm -hmm. sentence and comes out, that person is immediately eligible for food stamps. Okay. That helps because when a person comes out of prison, they have $100 and that's it. Right. And, um, you know, if they don't have family support, if they, they don't have a job, uh, mm -hmm. they're hungry. Uh, those first 90 days can be the most um, difficult and the, the time when they will maybe reoffend because right. they, uh, they need food. Mm -hmm. So the only carve out that we have in Nebraska for uh, taking away this benefit for the people who are coming out of prison is drug offenses. Okay. That's the only one. Um, if you're a convicted rapist, if you're a convicted, you know, robber, uh, you can get, once you get out of prison, you can get those food stamps, you mm -hmm. can get that benefit. Only drug offense. So, <coughs> Senator Hunt is trying to fix that loophole right. uh, by assuring that those folks who have an addiction or who have an issue with drugs can also get the food stamps so they can stay out of prison again. Okay. Okay. Um, it became a big deal and um, <clears throat> it was uh, hard for Senator Hunt to convince folks that uh, it should happen. Mm -hmm. However, it's, it hasn't killed the bill. Uh, it's still in general file, it hasn't moved okay. beyond general file. Uh, we'll see what happens next session mm -hmm. with this. I guarantee you she will introduce another bill if she doesn't bring this bill uh, okay. back. Now there was an effort to curtail or derail these private wind farms. Can you tell us about the compromise that was reached for that? And this was one where there actually mm -hmm. was uh, some good compromise. The, the, original, uh, the original deal was they were trying to uh, prevent um, the neighbors from having to deal with the sound and okay. the, all the stuff of the, of the windmills. Well, and the neighbors could be not on the, the property that, say that a, a farmer wants to have a, you know, a windmill on his, farm, on his uh, property, his neighbors could complain, and, the, and it was like a setback of like something like three miles. I mean, it pretty much essentially uh, stopped the uh, windmill production at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the compromise, grew, and I can't remember exactly what the, the parameters were, but both sides came together and said, okay, well, we, let, we need to fix this. We need mm -hmm. to be able to provide wind energy where it's needed, and yet understand that there are some neighbors who are going to be unhappy about mm -hmm. that. And so they really did, they worked on a very good compromise. Do you know, has Iowa run into these problems? Because they have an enormous <laughs> number of wind farms in Iowa. <laughs> they do, and I'm from Oklahoma, and mm -hmm. they have them as well. So it's just, you know, with, with any new type of energy, uh, there, there are pros and cons to it. It's not all, it's, it's not all great, right. um, but we can work these issues out if we just work together. Okay. Now, um, there were a couple of things that didn't make it out of the session that may wind up as ballot initiatives. One is the medical marijuana, 
And the other is the, um, the redistricting. So where do those, do they look like they're going to be ballot initiatives? What, what's well, going to happen yeah, with the two of them? Let's first talk about uh, redistricting, because uh, obviously that's a League of Women. That right. Is, uh, very important it's one of our issue. issues. Because if, if you don't have free and fair elections, nothing else matters. Uh, none of this stuff is going to happen if we don't have free and fair elections, and we can't trust our uh, elec election system. And you know the gerrymandering is, is always is a, is a big issue now nationwide, and I mm -hmm. think people are beginning to realize what a you know what a core issue that is. Redistricting, um, I don't know if it's going to be a ballot issue or not. I do know that several senators are there's a, let me see there's a. Um, Interim study, uh, Senator DeBoer, mm -hmm. LR199, is doing an interim study on that. So over the summer, um, she'll be working on that issue and okay. hopefully uh, we'll bring some players together so that mm -hmm. we can get a very good system. Now that didn't get out of committee though even, right? I know, and I think it and was just because there was so many. Yeah, yeah, it was. They there they were so many other things file. going on okay. um, that I just don't think um, okay. it became, it wasn't important to them, it's important to us, but it right. wasn't important to them. Okay, so. and then the, mer medical, the medical marijuana? Medical marijuana, medical um, marijuana, is good public policy. And it's good public policy for several reasons. One is, the, the complaint to some of the senators is, well, we're just gonna run right into recreational if we do mm -hmm. medical marijuana. Maybe, maybe not. But if you have a medical marijuana bill first, then you have very carefully crafted, you know who the folks are, who, mm -hmm. and they are registered with the state, you can do outcomes, you can do planning, you can change the laws so that it's a, it's a small, kind of like a pilot program. Mm -hmm. And then if, if recreational marijuana comes along someday, we're ready. Mm -hmm. We're ready as a state and we understand uh, the needs. Okay. And, all, and, you know, and, and it's, again, it's like anything else, there, there are good points and bad points to it, uh, but it is good public policy and it would help people. Um, I do definitely think there's going to be a ballot issue come forth on that. On that one. Now, the League of Women Voters is nonpartisan, and it does not support candidates or parties, but we do weigh in on mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. So can you really uh, quickly explain how that works and how the League becomes involved in ballot issues? Y yes. The, the League, um, when the League was first started, we realized that there was a lot we did not know. Mm -hmm. And in order to learn, we, we developed this, a system of studies. So we would carefully study an issue uh, on the state level or on the local level or on the national level. We would study issues very carefully. Uh, and then we'd come to some sort of consensus among our members of how we're going to um, uh, develop a policy statement for that particular issue. And so through the years, that's what we've done. Um, not everything has to be studied because there, there's a lot of information out there on, on issues that, I mean, our, our traditional study has been like two-year studies. Well, okay. things come up in a hurry, mm -hmm. and so we have, we've become a little bit more adept at uh, smoothing out our, our slow-moving cogs mm -hmm. in the league and getting studies a little faster. And we have, we have national studies, we have national policy yes. that we can look to, we have state policy, and we have local policy that we can look to. Yes. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. Now, there are a lot of interim studies that were passed this mm -hmm. session. They're going to they're gonna spend the summer going through some of these, uh, yes. these things. Can you tell us the ones that are probably of the most importance to the league? Yes. And I studied? mentioned, obviously, the uh, redistricting Senator DeBoer's okay. uh, LR199. Um, then there's another one. Senator Legrone is doing one about election technology. Okay. Um, we have been fortunate in Nebraska in that we have uh, optical scanners and a paper trail. Right. So many of the states don't have paper trails anymore, um, and that's a very valuable commodity, and I think people I'm have sure. figured that one out. Uh, sometimes what is old is new again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but our machines are getting old. Our technology is getting old, and, and we always have to uh, keep up to date with that. Mm -hmm. And so Senator Legrone is looking into how we can maintain our technology while also maintaining our paper trail. So that's a good one. Um, can I just ask, do you sure, think sure. that they'll, they'll be able, they'll be looking at mail-in ballots for the whole state like they do in a place like Oregon? That's, that's always a discussion. Okay. And I think, again, there's been a couple of, of uh, places in Nebraska mm -hmm. where they're already doing that okay. because they have a very small population and it's working really, really well. Okay. So I think that will also develop um, further on. Okay. 
And there were a couple others you wanted to mention. Oh, um, well, we were talking about overcrowding, and, and a piece of overcrowding is the is bail issue. Okay. You know, again, poor people don't have the money for bail. Wealthy folk do. Mm -hmm. And so poor people end up in jail awaiting their trial, and they might not even be convicted of the offense, and yet they're in jail for um, the, uh, it could be months. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they lose their job, they lose their income, they lose their family uh, connections, and mm -hmm. so we're looking at different ways of dealing with cash bail so that we can keep those people out of jail. Okay. And then real quickly, um, were there any particular standouts among the freshman senators, the new senators, people to well, watch, especially in the next session? Um, Senator Ben Hansen is a, a chiropractor from from Blair, and I found it interesting that he was one of the folks who said that um, uh, that uh, drug offenders should not have food once they get out of prison, that they mm -hmm. should have to work for their food. And I'm thinking, you know, a chiropractor is supposed to help people. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he should kind of rethink that. Um, Senator uh, Hunt, again, mm -hmm. uh, very strong, very, um, uh, she's going to be a terrific uh, states person. Uh, Senator Kavanaugh mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Omaha is doing a super job, and uh, Senator Blood, mm -hmm. uh, she's a she's a scrapper. Okay. She <coughs> she had a, a, a thing with Senator Lowe one day where uh, she asked him, so how many how many days in a month is a, a woman uh, fertile? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes, his eyes got huge. Oh, I bet. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> And how many days in a year is a man fertile? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. <laughs> and she said 365. Right. Anyway, she's, she's terrific. She's a mm -hmm. scrapper. Uh, we're going to have some uh, good th stuff going on uh, okay. in the year to come. Okay. And then uh, to close with, Senator Lathrop noted that the legislature seemed more polarized, um, more people on each end of the spectrum. He would, you know, from when he was there, mm -hmm. uh, I guess what eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. How does this portend for compromise in the next session? I think the big the big problem is uh, term limits okay. because there is not the institutional memory that we mm -hmm. used to have, and people come in there and the word that I that comes to mind to me all the time is callow. Okay. They are callow. They are mm -hmm. ignorant, and they also have very mm -hmm. high egos. Okay. Well, well, unfortunately, we are out of time today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Peggy. We appreciate the work uh, you put into following the Nebraska legislature. We hope that you found this wrap-up helpful and um, that you, uh, if you don't know who your state uh, legislator is, you will find out. For the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha, I'm Mary Lee Moulton, reminding you to inform yourself about the issues and at election time, go vote Omaha. Thanks very much.